Hello with the railway station in Carlisle. It's a bit sunny and cloudy, cold and been raining. It's just coming up to ten past four on Saturday, the 22nd of May 2021. We are here today because I'm doing yet another journey with us. From here down to Leeds, it's more than Standard Plus for the animating journey via the Settle and Carlisle Line and the Airdale Line. Let's go check it out. It'll be brilliant. Let's go. Carlisle Railway Station lies on the West Coast Main Line, serving the city of Carlisle in Cumbria. This station is also known as Carlisle Citadel, and it is the last stop in England for trains running north to Scotland. This station also has services travelling on the Cumbrian coastline to Barrow in Furness, the Tyne Valley Line to Newcastle, and the Settle and Carlisle Line to Settle and beyond to Leeds, the latter of which I will be travelling on today. Right, without further ado, let's get on board this Class 158 unit. The unit operating the service today is 158754 and it's one of Northern's three car sets. This train is scheduled to depart at 1618 and it departs span on that time. Now, I'm sorry I didn't get that much footage of Carlisle Station before departure. I had done a train spotting session there before making this and I barely had time to get some as a result. For the protection of everyone, you must wear a face covering that covers your nose and mouth on board trains and at stations at all. Straight away, we leave the West Coast Main Line and the Tyne Valley Line to join the Settle and Carlisle Line. Now this route is considered to be England's most scenic railway journey and you will soon see why in a few minutes. The first stop is Armourthwaite. Now, a lot of stations on the Settle and Carlisle line closed in 1970, and Armourthwaite was one of them. They all reopened in 1986. The following station is Lazenby and Kirk Oswald. This station is the only one on the Settle and Carlisle line to have two places in its name. After Lazenby and Kirk Oswald, I had a hot chocolate and some ginger biscuits from the trolley, and they were both very delicious. And if you were paying close attention, there was a Settle and Carlisle Railway sticker on the ginger biscuits. After departure from Langwesby, it's time for a review of the interior of this train. Firstly, the seats. These are extremely comfortable and offer a great amount of padding. They are really suitable for long distance journeys like this one, and the pattern is also very nice looking. There's also a small but sturdy tray table at the airline style seats. I also really like the patterned carpet on the train. However, unfortunately, the legroom is really tight, with limited room to stretch your legs. This is practically the only issue I have with this train. At 1700, we are arriving into Appleby, also known as Appleby in Westmoreland. It's a historic market town, home to approximately 3,000 people as of 2022. 
This station is one of only two on this route not to have closed in 1970, when a lot of the other stations closed due to local passenger services being withdrawn. Unfortunately, Eric Tracy, who is a well-known railway photographer and Anglican bishop, died here on the 13th of May 1978 after suffering from a fatal heart attack while waiting for 92-220 Evening Star which was hauling a rail tour through the station. There is a slate plaque on the main station building to his memory and one of the locomotives at the NYMR has been named after him. <laughs> Fifteen minutes down the line is Kirby Stephen. The market town is just north of here, with a market being held there every Monday, which includes the sale of livestock. There is also a station called Kirby Stephen East between here and the town on the Eden Valley Railway. This railway also went through Appleby East, but it is now a heritage line between there and Walcop, although there is currently no station at Appleby East. And there's also a heritage centre at Kirby Stephen East. As we start to head into the Yorkshire Dales, this is the part of the Settle and Carlisle line that is the most scenic. I mean, just look at it. This is honestly the most scenic railway I've ever been on in the UK. Now what you'll have noticed we passed was an old semaphore signal. This railway is one of only few main lines in the UK to still use this type of signalling. A few minutes later, we are approaching Garsdale. This station has the statue of Rothup, but annoyingly, I was sitting on the wrong side, so I couldn't capture it. So instead, here's this picture of it to show you what it looks like. Rothup was a border collie dog belonging to Graham Nuttall, who was part of a campaign to save this route from closure in the 1980s. He sadly died while out walking in the Welsh mountains, and Rothup stayed by his side for 11 weeks, then shortly died after attending his funeral. After we leave Garsdale, try to be sitting on the right of the train for amazing valley views as we approach the border between Cumbria and Yorkshire. Five minutes after Garsdale is dead. At an altitude of 1,150 feet, it is the highest mainline station in England. It is also our last stop in Cumbria before we head into Yorkshire. The station buildings here are now privately owned and are available to rent as holiday cottage accommodation. Whilst I remember, here is a shout out to Dylan's Travel Reports, who coincidentally uploaded a journey report on this route to YouTube the day before I recorded this. Please do make sure to drop his channel a sub. Anyway, we are now coming up to Bleemore Tunnel, which is the longest tunnel on the Settle and Carlisle line. It 
Immediately after the tunnel is Ribblehead Viaduct. This magnificent 24-arch structure was built between 1870 and 1875 and carries the line 440 yards across Batty Moss. It is the longest viaduct on the Settle and Carlisle line and the only part of the route to be single-tracked. The reason for this is to avoid the simultaneous loading of two trains crossing the viaduct at the same time. Here is this picture of it, just so you can see it from the outside. The viaduct had just undergone a major restoration at the time of recording this video. This was part of a project that cost £2.1 million to ensure it will remain open for many years in the future. After the viaduct is Ribblehead Railway Station, which is our first calling point in Yorkshire. Now it's time to take this opportunity to walk through the train. There are toilets in every coach and there's also bike storage here. There are wheelchair spaces on this train, however at the time of filming I discovered that these were out of use. Now it's time for a toilet review of this train. There are buttons to open the door, close the door and lock the door. There's also a baby changing table if you need to change your child. There's a tap and some soap and a hand dryer too. And I'm pleased to report that everything was clean and in good working order, albeit the hand dryer was a tad weak. We are now coming into Settle, which is 72 to 73 miles from Carlisle and is technically where the Settle and Carlisle line finishes. This is also the other station on this line which didn't close in 1970. Soon after leaving Settle, we approach Settle Junction, where the Bentham Line branches off towards Lancaster and Morecambe. One of the stops between Settle and Skipton is Helifield. This is where the Dales Rail service to Blackpool North branches off towards Blackburn via the Ribble Valley Line. However, this service only runs in the summer season, once a day on a Sunday. A couple of stops later and we are approaching Skipton. This is where the electric commuter services from Leeds terminate, so from here on we will be running under overhead wires. 
This is also the northwestern terminus of the Airedale line, which is what we'll be travelling on for the remainder of the journey. Skipton has also been featured in a recent video of mine, but can you remember which one? This line is also the only part of the journey where this train will reach its top speed of 90 miles per hour. This train only stops at selected stations on this route, and one of them is Keithley. This station serves as the northern terminus of the Keithley and Worth Valley Railway, where the railway children was filmed. The penultimate stop of the journey is Shipley, for services to Bradford Forster Square and Ilkley on the Wharfdale line. As we are now approaching Leeds, it's time to start thinking about leaving the train. You must wear a face covering that covers your nose and mouth on board trains and at stations at all times, unless you are We are now approaching Leeds, so it's now time to get ready to leave the train. Overall, I really enjoyed my journey on the Settle and Carlisle line. This is a route I really recommend due to all its fantastic scenery and historical information, and the Class 158s are also really great for this route. The only major problem I have with them is the limited legroom, but that's easily outweighed by all the other positives. Bearing in mind that these trains underwent refurbishment only in the last few years. What are your thoughts on these trains? Be sure to leave your opinion in the comments section. Right guys, that concludes my journey report from Carlisle to Leeds. I really hope you enjoyed it.